Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the tests of tubular function in this renal function test. So this include concentration test. Then water dilution or elimination test. And tests of tubular excretion and reabsorption. Tests of tubular excretion and reabsorption. So, first we will see the concentration test. Concentration test. This concentration test is based on the ability of the kidneys to concentrate the urine. Ability of the kidneys to concentrate the urine and based on measuring specific gravity of urine. Measuring specific gravity of urine. So, this concentration test is based on the ability of the kidneys to concentrate the urine and based on the measuring, based on measuring the specific gravity of the urine. This test is conducted under conditions of restricted fluid intake or by inhibiting diuresis by injection of ADH. So, this is conducted under the conditions of restricted fluid intake. restricted fluid intake or by inhibiting diuresis inhibiting diuresis by injection of this ADH so various methods are there first one is Fishberg concentration test Fishberg concentration test this is the most commonly used the simple concentration test here the procedure is patient is not allowed to take fluid from 8 pm to 10 am patient is not allowed to take fluid from 8 pm to 10 am evening meal is given at 7 pm evening meal at 7 pm then this meal should be high protein and must have a fluid content of less than 200 ml it should be high protein content and the fluid will be less than 200 ml then urine passed in night is discarded then collecting the urine sample at 8 am 9 am 10 am so collecting the urine, urine sample at 8 am 9 am and 10 am and will determine the specific gravity of each of the sample will determine the specific gravity of each of the three samples that is the procedure if the tubular function is normal the specific gravity of at least one of the sample will be greater than 1.025 if the tubular function is normal, specific gravity of at least one of these three samples will be greater than 1.025. Then if the specific gravity is 1.020 or less, 1.020 or less specific gravity, it indicates impaired tubular function. Then a false result may be obtained if the patient has congestive cardiac failure and diabetes mellitus. That is Fishberg concentration test. This one is Lashmet and Newberg. Lashmet and Newberg concentration test. Here this is done by severe fluid intake restriction. Here severe fluid intake restriction over a period of 38 hours. Over a period of 38 hours there is severe fluid intake restriction and it involves the use of a special dry diet for one day special dry diet for one day 
that is Lashmet and Newberg concentration test. The next one is concentration test with posterior pituitary extract with posterior pituitary extract. Here the diuresis produced by the ingestion of 1600 ml of water in 15 minutes in a normal person will be inhibited by this subcutaneous injection of 10 pressure units of posterior pituitary extract that is 0.5 ml of vasopressin injection 0.5 ml of vasopressin injection so the diuresis produced by the ingestion of 1000 ml of water in 15 minutes in a normal person it will be inhibited by the subcutaneous injection of 10, 10 pressure units of posterior pituitary extract that is 0.5 ml of vasopressin injection. This posterior, posterior pituitary extract also inhibit the diuresis seen in congestive cardiac failure and in diabetes mellitus. And it allows sufficient concentration to determine the degree of tubular function in these conditions. That means congestive cardiac failure and in diabetes mellitus. During the test, individual with normal kidney function excrete the urine with a specific gravity 1.020 or higher. Individual with normal kidney function excrete urine with a specific gravity 1.020 or higher. Failure of this indicate renal damage. That is about concentration test. Next one is water dilution or elimination test. Water dilution or elimination test. Here the ability of the kidneys to eliminate water is tested by measuring the urinary output after ingesting a large volume of water. After ingesting a large volume of water, the ability of the kidneys to eliminate water is tested by measuring the urinary output. Measuring urinary output. Here the procedure is, the patient remains in bed throughout the test. Because elimination of water is maximum in the horizontal position. So, the patient remains in bed throughout the test. On the day before the test, the patient has to take evening meal before 8 p.m. Before 8 p.m., the evening meal should be taken. On the morning of the test, patient has to empty the bladder at 8 a.m. So, patient has to empty the bladder at 8 a.m and this urine is discarded then uh, drinks 1200 ml of water within half an hour first 8 am the bladder is empty and that the urine is discarded then drinks 1200 ml water within half an hour and the bladder is emptied at 9 am 10 am 11 am and 12 pm and the volume and specific gravity of the four specimens are measured. We will measure the volume and specific gravity of, four the, of the four samples. If the renal function is normal, that is the procedure. If the, the renal function is normal, more than 80 percentage, that is about 1000 ml, about 1000 ml of water is voided in four hours. If the renal function is normal, more than 80% of this ingested water, that is 1000 ml will be voided within 4 hours. Then the larger part is excreted in the first 2 hours. Then the specific gravity of at least one specimen should be 1.003 or less. Specific gravity of at least one sample of the four samples will be 1.003 or less. That is in the case of normal renal function. Then if the renal function is impaired, 
less than 80 percent that is less than 1000 ml of water is excreted in 4 hours and the specific gravity does not fall to 1.003 and it remains fixed at 1.010 in the case of severe renal damage specific gravity will be fixed at 1.010 at uh, in the case of severe renal damage that is water dilution or elimination test next one is tests of tubular excretion and reabsorption tests of tubular excretion and reabsorption this include phenol sulfthalein excretion test phenol sulfthalein excretion that is PSP excretion test that includes 15 minute P 15 minutes PSP test so by the use of this phenol sulfthalein that is or phenol red about 94 percentage is excreted by tubular action 94 percentage by tubular action and only 6 percentage 6 percentage by glomerular filtration glomerular filtration so by the use of this phenol sulfthalein or PSP or phenol red about 94 percentage is excreted by tubular action and only 6 percentage by glomerular filtration. So, this test measures tubular activity and renal blood flow. So, coming to the 15 minute PSP test, 15 minute PSP. When 1 ml of PSP that is about 6 mg. 1 ml of this PSP is injected IV, normal kidneys will excrete 30 to 50 percentage of the dye during the first 15 minutes. Of the first 15 minutes, if the when the when one more one ml of this PSP that is 6 mg is injected IV uh, within 15 minutes, the normal kidneys will excrete 30 to 50 percentage of the dye. Then excretion of less than 20, less than 23 percentage, excretion of less than 23 percentage of the dye during this period indicates impaired renal function. That is about tests of tubular excretion and reabsorption. So these are the tubular function tests in renal function tests. So this is about tubular function tests. This is today's topic. Thank you for watching.